Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux for Everyone and welcome home. I'm Jason, even though you haven't seen my face for a while. Uh, I've been doing these, these really um, super scripted, super produced videos lately and I wanted to get back to just having an unscripted chat about a topic that's important to me and I'm, I'm sure is important to you guys as well. And so that's what this is going to be. It's just gonna be a talking head video uh, there won't be a lot of B-roll, there won't be a lot of extra footage or flashy stuff or background music. Uh, so if you want to minimize this and go about your business and go about your drive or your walk or whatever, feel free to. But I've got to talk about Steam Deck and I've got to talk about Epic's massive announcement yesterday where they are basically uh, extending official support for Easy Anti-Cheat, which is their um, in-house produced anti-cheat software to Linux and Mac OS, but that's not really the most important part. The biggest deal from this announcement is that they are also adding support for Wine and Proton. And um, in, the, in the headline over at the Epic developer blog, they actually call out Steam Deck. They say something like uh, support for Linux, Mac OS, and Steam Deck. And of course, what that means is that even more of the most popular games on Steam are going to be supported now. So games that use uh, easy anti-cheat are titles like uh, Apex Legends, Black Desert, Halo the Master Chief Collection, Gears 5, Dead by Daylight, War Thunder. Uh, so some big titles. And what that means is you're going to be able to not just play these games on the Steam Deck and on your Linux distro of choice, but you're not going to have to have that fear of being banned for, uh, you know, the, the, the servers or the developers flagging you as some kind of cheater. And so that is straight up amazing. And all the developers have to do, according to Epic, is just flick a few switches in the, uh, the Epic online services portal that they use, kind of their, their back end, their dashboard. So that's awesome. But what we need to do is we need to make some friendly noise and, uh, and get the attention of our favorite developers who are using Easy Anti-Cheat and say, hey, please flick those switches so that I can enjoy your game on the Steam Deck. Of course, there is another big anti-cheat service out there, and that's BattleEye. BattleEye is, uh, I mean, I, I know it from Destiny 2. I think that PUBG uses it. But right out of the gate, when, when Valve announced the Steam Deck, they made a promise. And their promise was that they were going to be working with anti-cheat developers to enable more support on Linux and thus on the Steam Deck. And with this Epic Games announcement, they have started making good on that promise. So I, I have high hopes that we're gonna see Battle Eye fall into place and that this move is gonna inspire all of the other uh, anti-cheat developers. Maybe not Riot, but at least the rest of them to, uh, you know, to follow in Epic's footsteps. And Epic is a, is a pretty big market leader and they're a pretty big, uh, a pretty big influence. So, I hope that we see this, and I hope that we see it by the time the deck launches. I have been, as you can see, I put these here on purpose, I've been a huge fan of portable gaming ever since the original Game Boy was released. And uh, I remember laying in bed, a bed that was kind of the size of this one, as a, as a teen with, uh, I think I had two games, Tetris and some Mario game. It could have been Mario or it could have been Final Fantasy Legends. I would play Tetris at night until the battery died and I would go to sleep dreaming about <laughs> Tetris and Tetris like blocks falling and, and uh, working out the puzzles in my head in my sleep. That game left such an impact and, and the concept of portable gaming has always been so appealing. I was really enthralled when Nvidia released The Shield as well because that was kind of, kind of the first big leap uh, that, that, that took our, our PC gaming experience, which was at that point pretty much sitting on a desk with a keyboard and mouse, and, uh, and, and made it portable. When I wrote my review of the NVIDIA Shield at Forbes years ago, I think the, the headline uh, included something like Skyrim in bed, because <laughs> that was the dream. Oh my God, I'm playing Skyrim in bed. This could not be any, any more amazing. Let's get to the meat 
of this video. My three hopes for the Steam Deck and two of my biggest fears. My number one hope for the Steam Deck is that Epic Games launches their own uh, native Linux launcher. I think that would be freaking amazing. Is it destined to come true? Uh, I don't know. Is it likely? I think it is. And the reason I say Epic is because, I mean, that would be a natural extension of what happened this week with, um, with what, what is certainly a move that Valve influenced, right? I mean, yes, they're, they're competitors in a way, but they're also, they also stand to gain from each other's advancements in the PC gaming industry. So I think that Epic should create their own launcher for the Steam Deck and by extension, probably for, you know, desktop Linux in general. I don't think we need to see an Origin games client because a lot, I'm not sure if all, but a lot of EA's games are already going into Steam. And you can find a lot of their games on Steam now that used to be exclusives on, on the Origin store. Uh, Ubisoft, kind of the same situation. The Ubisoft has some exclusives, but you do see a lot of the Uplay games on Steam as well. Epic is kind of the big holdout. Epic is the platform that, that seems to have more and more exclusives. Love them or hate them for that. That's, your, that's totally in your right to do. Uh, but we need an Epic Games launcher on Steam and we need it on the Steam Deck. Thank you, motorcycle. I wonder if it could be developed uh, kind of like a third party uh, contracted development for this. Because remember when Epic Games gave Lutris that $25,000 grant, um, there's a relationship there. And, you know, Lutris has done a lot of work getting various um, PC game stores and clients to work well on Linux. And so I really have to wonder, could we see Lutris developing an official uh, Epic Games client for for Linux and thus the Steam Deck. We'll see, but that's my that's one of my big hopes. My second big hope for the Steam Deck, AMD FSR. Um, now, if you've seen any of the multiple videos that I've been doing on the channel about AMD's FSR, you have to agree that it has really impressive results. And what I want to see specifically is AMD FSR built in, built in to Steam OS and, uh, and, well, to Steam, basically. So imagine just having a, t a little toggle where you can just check, yes, I want AMD FSR active on all of my games. AMD's Fidelity Super FX resolution would be especially useful for people who want to dock their Steam Deck, plugging it into a, a 1080p, 1440p, 4K monitor, uh, some, a hub of some kind. In my testing, AMD FSR has meant the difference between a stuttery, frustrating, unplayable mess to, hey, I can actually play this game at 1080p low graphics, you know, fairly smoothly. And that is especially, especially important on any type of laptop or device that just has an APU or integrated graphics, no dedicated graphics card it means that a lot more of those AAA games become playable. And, you know, even if they are playable already on the Steam Deck with its 800p screen, having AMD FSR just, just built in and working, if you want it to, means that you can play those games at higher resolutions with smoother frame rates. My third biggest hope for the Steam Deck, <laughs> I wanna see more Steam Decks. I, I would love to see uh, big PC OEMs like um, Alienware, like Dell, Razer, HP, kind of create their own, put their own signature stamp on the Steam Deck and the form factor. And you know, after all, it's, it's an open device. It's, it's, not like, it's not like these guys, like a Razer or an Alienware, can come along and make their own Xbox or their own PlayStation, but if the Steam Deck becomes a, a viable, popular um, mainstream thing. If people go, this is a PC console I need. If Valve nails the user interface and they uh, they continue to go on this crusade with 
with other developers and publishers and getting all that game support, if they do everything right, and this sells millions, I mean, it creates an industry. Of course, there are the, the little guys, the, the lesser known and more expensive uh, handheld PC machines, but those really haven't made a, a huge impact in the West. And if Valve makes that impact in the West with the Steam Deck, then we see, maybe, all of these other competing Steam Decks come along. And what does that do? It drives down the price. It, uh, it, these guys do the Linux gaming marketing for us, and, and more people uh, are made aware of how awesome Linux gaming can be. Those are my three hopes. An official Epic Games launcher for the Steam Deck, AMD FSR built in to Steam, Steam OS, uh, the Steam Deck, and then some competing Steam Deck machines. Now, as much as I like to stay positive, uh, I, I do want to discuss the fears that I have because I think we need to we need to temper our expectations a little bit. And I don't think these will see the light of day. I hope that they don't. But these are my two biggest fears for the Steam Deck. Number one. I worry that Valve may not be able to produce enough to meet the demand. If they nail the marketing, if they get everything right, press is going to write about it, people are going to talk to their friends, they're going to create a lot of demand, and I, I fear that they might not have the, um, the capabilities to, to meet that demand. But then again, if there were, uh, if there were competitors in this space, then you've got more players in the game able to produce more hardware. And, and while that wouldn't necessarily be a big win for Valve because it's not their hardware that they're selling, they're still putting Steam in more people's hands and we're still getting Linux gaming in more people's hands. And so it's kind of a win-win. Anyway, let's hope they can meet the demand. I hope there is a lot of demand. And my second biggest fear about the Steam Deck is um, actually that, that people might walk away from the experience not liking Linux, having a, a sour taste in their mouth. Um, someone gets a Steam Deck for Christmas for their birthday. They go out and buy it with their hard-earned cash, and they've, um, they're have they under the impression that they can play Destiny 2, they can play Fortnite, League of Legends, they can play whatever is in their Steam library because they have this product called the Steam Deck, right? But they can't. They can't play them for whatever reason. You know, despite Valve's best efforts, they weren't able to get whatever game working. Uh, they weren't able to convince this anti-cheat developer to support Proton, to support Wine, to support Linux. It's possible. As humans, our nature is we, we tend to tell more people about a negative experience that we've had than when we have a positive experience. And if Valve isn't able to continue delivering on the promises uh, that it could set Linux up for failure. And I don't want to see that happen. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching this. I, I think I need to do more videos like this. It's um, it's cathartic in a way, just sitting here having a, a relaxed chat about something that I'm passionate about and something I know you guys are passionate about too. Um, do me a favor. I want to hear your biggest fears and your biggest hopes about the Steam Deck and maybe about Linux gaming in general down in the comments. And uh, if you enjoyed this, if you like the kind of content that I do here, hit subscribe, hit like, hit all the buttons. Anyway, uh, we'll chat soon. Until the next video, you guys take care and take care of each other. Bye.